so updates on um, my process uh, preparing for my surgery on Valentine's Day I actually got in touch with or went to go see um, the additional surgeon that will be working with my gynecological surgeon and um, yeah basically had a consultation to see what's going on with my body um, what happened with the last surgery that had to be stopped and why and figure out if he can work with it and how he can work with it so um, basically we did talk about my scar tissue from you know my surgery when I was a baby and how that affected the stopped surgery and we kind of came to the conclusion that okay again I'm about to get into like medical details that I have intentionally left out because of reasons um, but these will all be going out as I'm in surgery or like soon after so I feel better putting them out but it has been concluded that I have a hostile abdomen um, because of the scar tissue and that basically means that there's so much scar tissue that for me that my intestines are likely glued to the front wall of my stomach by scar tissue. Hey, it's Editing Crystal here post-surgery. I just wanted to clarify some things for accuracy's sake. I say stomach so many times in this video when I really mean abdomen, specifically when I'm talking about my intestines being adhered to the front wall of my abdomen. That is correct. Not my stomach as in the organ. All right, that's all. Now that would explain so many things because keep in mind like I've I've definitely felt the effects of having fibroids absolutely I've definitely felt the effect of you know chronic pain issues since a car accident that I had like there's been so many different things that have affected the way that I live in my body and the way that my body can move and how I have to how much more I have to pay attention to it um, and care for it but this <laughs> is something that's actually been a part of my entire life, um, my conscious life anyway, right? Like I had the surgery when I was a baby um, and the scar tissue then has been there since I was a baby. So any anything that I've been dealing with around my abdomen, my anything that's housed there, you know, my intestines, everything has likely been a result of my intestines being glued to the wall of my stomach. Again, this is what they believe um, from the consultation and from the notes from the stopped surgery. So it's a lot. That That's what we concluded. That's what's going on inside my body. The surgeon, the general surgeon, um, the additional surgeon, right, that I'm working with um, is still confident that he can do this and do it laparoscopically. He is one of the robotics experts. Um, and by that, I mean like the experts in robotic surgery <laughs> at the center that he's at. Um, and yeah, he's confident that he can still do it take down all of the scar tissue and remember the reason that they couldn't do the surgery before or that they couldn't finish it before was that they put the camera in they could not see past the scar tissue so now we have someone on hand to take down or remove the scar tissue so that they can get to where they need to go they can see where they need to see but also now that we've talked about everything and kind of concluded what's going on in my body a little bit more he's actually going to take down as much scar tissue as he can and if it is the case that my intestines are in fact glued to the front wall of my stomach he's gonna fix that too 
So, um, <laughs> here I go again. Okay. But, yeah, he's confident he can do it. Um, still minimal, minimally invasive. There will be a, maybe one or two more ports um, or incisions for ports than there would have been originally, but <laughs> we're figuring it out. He's figured it out. He knows the, the course of action, the plan, and what they're gonna do so that he can get in there, um, take down the scar tissue, make sure that my intestines can just like move around. They're supposed to slide around each other and like glide and all my fucking life, They've just been not doing that because they're stuck. They're not moving freely like they should be and haven't been my entire life. So that's something that he's going to fix while he's in there. Um, another thing that I may have mentioned in the other video, maybe not, is that I have a hernia, an umbilical hernia. It's new to my body, but it's not new. It's been, you know, a good amount of years at this point, but... It's still a new thing to my body. It was alarming when I first noticed it, the first time it popped out, and it's not comfortable. <laughs> and I don't want it to be there. And it also has like bad days, like episodes where if I'm doing a thing, if I'm lifting stuff, there are certain things that just make it really bad to where it hurts and is inflamed, and that's always a bad a bad way to go. I've actually gone to the hospital, the ER before, because I was scared. It was like out and stuck. For those of you who don't know what that is, an umbilical hernia, um, in my case, is just that my belly button pokes out. But not because I have an Audi, because that hasn't been that way my whole life. So basically there's like a wall of muscles, like the muscles inside your stomach. Um, there might be like an opening. And so the intestines, these are my intestines, <laughs> can like poke through. And that's why they are poking through the, um, the navel, right? And so what they're gonna do is make sure that that is not so loose and open. They're actually gonna put mesh there too. I decided on mesh, which for my particular case is not as severe my umbilical hernia specifically, it's not as severe as a lot of people's. It's pretty minor um, in comparison, but mesh just gives me a better chance of it never coming back. It kind of reduces the chance of it never coming back. I forget the percentages, but it's like, I don't know, like 0.01% um, to like 0%. It's minimal, but while I'm already open and I'm already going through all of these things, I may as well just do the thing right. Right? So that's how I'm looking at it. So, I'm gonna lay it all out again. In one singular surgery, I am having, uh, what is the order of it? I don't remember, but I'm having a lot of scar tissue removed. So I'm having a takedown of adhesions, um, that's the terminology, right? A lot of scar tissue in my abdomen um, that also will allevi alleviate a lot of intestinal issues because it is literally likely going to be separating my intestines from the wall of my stomach so that they can move around as they're supposed to, right? I'm also getting an umbilical hernia repaired. And of course, the big one, I'm getting all of my fibroids removed. So it's, uh, I'm calling it a three-part surgery just because I don't, in um, passing language, don't want to have to explain all of the things, but it's a big ass deal. It's a big deal. It's, I have lived, the way that I've been living and experiencing my body with the fibroids after they got bad, like not the fibroids when I was bleeding heavily, which I thought that was bad at the time, but then it got to the point where like, I'm walking around with a pregnant belly. I told my sister <laughs> that I look like the things from, um, from Men in Black, the aliens from Men in Black. But aside from just the physical or the like visual part of it, 
it's hard. Like it's pressing against my um, bladder. It's a, uh, it's affecting how I can move my body. I'm still a yoga instructor. Like there are things I can't even do right now. Um, my energy levels, just body pains, just so many things that have been affected by the fibroids alone. And that's the fibroids alone. There's also this scar tissue takedown and just the way that's about to change my life too. I even, I even remember the doctor being like, I don't remember what he said exactly, but he was basically like, now, first he asked, did I have any like digestion issues or anything like that? And I was like, you know, there are some things sometimes. And he was like, now I'm not saying that this is gonna change your life after we take down the scar tissue, but it's probably it's probably gonna change your life. So I'm excited, I'm so ready. There are so many steps um, and that's where we are. That was my Valentine's Day. <laughs> that was my Valentine's Day. That was the news, of course, of course, I cried in the car after I left. And I think in the office too. <laughs> Um, before I told this man, thank you, but it's, things are moving. Things are moving. Yay. So yeah, that's my update. Um, I will keep updating as I get new information and yeah, that's all. Thank y'all so, so much for listening and following along and supporting the process, supporting the healing process. Who with with food, with money, um, recovery things, um, and just keeping up. Um, there are a lot of people who are just checking in and asking how the process is going. Even when I wasn't in the process, when I had to take some time off because of work, there were still people checking in like, hey, so when is the new surgery? And just making sure that I'm moving things along. It felt like pressure, but that's good. It's it's hard to move things when you don't have the energy. And that's why I think we all need healthcare advocates. But I finally got there. I'm finally right here. And we're moving. All right, this is very long. Thanks, y'all. And peace.